Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to our Let's Play series of Crusader Kings 3. This is episode number 6 of this new grand strategy game developed by Paradox Development Studios and published by Paradox Interactive. Uh, this is the sequel to Crusader Kings 2, the 2012 classic, uh, and the newest of the sort of staple Paradox games. Uh, this game is really about managing a dynasty, building a kingdom, building your influence, but really building your family's influence, your family's uh, place in history, uh, running a family dynasty during the Middle Ages. In today's episode, we are picking up as the Duchy of Georgia of the Bagrat family, or a Bagrat, Bagratoni a dynasty, I believe. And uh, in this uh, episode, we're picking up after the conclusion of yet another war, although we find ourselves in another war. So uh, the last episode was all about wars. We finished multiple wars and started multiple wars. It seems like we can't stay at peace for more than a few minutes. We've uh, just taken the province of Guria on the uh, Black Sea coast coast, uh, but now we find ourselves in a war against uh, another kingdom that was trying to take that province that we took from the previous owners. So it was kind of this weird three-way war where everybody wanted this province and we took it first, and so now we're in w at war with the folks who were uh, previously trying to take it, and that's where we're picking up. This was taken from a live stream from my uh, Twitch channel from a couple of weeks back. Uh, this is sort of a periodic series that I'll be posting on the channel every now and then. Uh, it's not one of my more popular series on YouTube, but it's actually by far my most popular series on Twitch. So I'm doing kind of a little bit of a mix and match. Um, we'll continue playing other games as, as always on the YouTube channel, but I do want to kind of keep posting this for those of you who may enjoy it and may, may have missed uh, the streams uh, since they were a couple of weeks back now. Let me know your thoughts below if you'd like to see more of this, if this is something you're enjoying or not. Uh, and with that being said, I'm just going to turn it back over to the live stream and I hope you guys enjoy. Hello and Alpha J Wolf. All right, so we now are good, I think, in terms of our... Uh, terms of our, our title situation. Wait, I'm at war with someone? Shit. When did they declare war on me? The third is Avonian conquest of the county of Gura. But, but when? When the hell did that start? I didn't see a pop-up. Oh, oh, guys. Guys, we can declare war on the emperor of the Byzantine Empire. Because that would be smart. Okay, well, I guess we're going to go ahead and raise all our armies again. Let's slow things down a little bit. And then let's march over here. The enemy army is smaller than our own, so... Hopefully we crush them relatively easily. I wonder if I gain military martial studies based off of, like, winning battles. I would assume I might. I'd gain, like, martial points. They're besieging the fort in Guria, but my troops should arrive in time. I don't even see the need to call allies to war. So they must have already been fighting the, Azov for the Azovanian conquest. So by taking the province, that's what triggered the war. Thank you for the follow, Voldemere. Potential battle. Well, looks like we'll get there in time. He's moving into mountainous terrain, so he's going to be slower to move. So I'm assuming I'll get there before he retreats, and I do. He only has 600 soldiers, which is good news for us. That's just his total army. So even if we lose an advantage in the enemy favor in terms of some of these, these turns... Our army's going to be too large, I think, for him to, to realistically hold out. Yep. We win that battle. Moving on to the pursuit phase. Not inflicting a ton of casualties in the pursuit phase. Meanwhile, a noble guest has arrived. I don't really know what that does. 
arrange a marriage, and it'll probably bring them into my... Ooh, this guy's a good marshal and a good steward. Let's arrange a marriage with Anna Bagratoni. She's one of my courtiers. She's 21. He's 37. He'll accept. And then we'll get him in our court. Nice. So we can add him to our... Uh... Actually, let's stay here and, and take this, this castle. I am a Bagratoni, uh, but I guess some of them aren't related to me, somehow. Are we not in a province that we're actually trying to take? Oh, we're not. They're over here. Well, in that case, let's follow this way. Gladly accept my marriage proposal. That's great. That fills out my knights. Also, so let's pause here. Our court, or our council. So, let's replace our marshal here with that new guy that we just recruited. Or wait. Do we want to replace our steward? Is our steward a decent soul? Let's do this. Better idea. Let's move Enzori to our military. He's not actually a powerful vassal, so he doesn't expect a position. All right. He'd be a slightly better marshal, but I'll rather... He's not a powerful vassal either, though. Okay, so a new marshal, level 14, good. New steward, level 15, good. I'm playing as the Duchy of Georgia. I built the Duchy of Georgia from ground up. It was a one-county minor when we started. The level 15 marshal is also a level 15 steward. That's why I'm not taking him. Because um, I would rather... Enemy combatants captured. Can I ransom them? He can't be uh, ransomed. Interesting. Um, I would rather have a 15 steward and a 14 marshal than a 15 marshal and 11 steward. So those were kind of my options. That's why I decided on the direction that I did. Yeah, but I also like having good marshals in terms of prowess skills. So I hear you. I mean, I understand if I forbid them from being in being knights, then they'll uh, they won't die. But the flip side of that is is the risk that if I don't have good enough knights, it can impact my combat ability. Also, I needed another knight to fill out my my total uh, total retinue. So. I don't have the Knight's Guard perk, Dark. I didn't take that. But that'll probably be my next martial skill. Thanks for the follow, Undud Blank. I'm not going to finish the siege in time, am I? One per day. One per day. No. More than one per day. So I'm hoping I've got enough progress on the siege. I probably could leave a small detachment here. So let's actually do this. Leave enough soldiers so the siege will continue. And then march the rest of the force south here to engage these guys. And we drive them back. Nope, don't do that. Shit, shit. Am I going to lose? My quality is low because I left the knights behind. Fuck. That was a bad idea. Uh. Oh, this is probably an even worse idea. Will they get there in time?
Okay, they arrived in time. That was very foolish on my part. I lost way more men than I needed to. But we won the battle in the end. Looks like we didn't actually lose that many casualties. So we lost 192 men. So we were losing, but we never got to the pursuit phase. So we didn't lose as many men as we could have. So we have to go back and restart the siege over here. Uh, Pixel, yeah, I like uh, I like CK3 a lot. Uh, this is the furthest I've survived as as Georgia Bagel. A mental break. Sequester myself to avoid temptation. You gain the trait re recluse. I lose my friendship. I lose stress. I don't want to lose my friend. The old commandments will help m me stay pure. I convert to carerism? I bite my lip and, lip and try to stay focused. 25 more stress. I'll cause a mental break and move forward to the next one. I guess I'll just have to go with recluse because I don't wanna I don't want my stress level to go up again. I don't want to lose Indezala as a friend, but it's really the only choice. Oh no, the recluse causes me to lose a dominion. Oh fuck. So I can't hold four I can't hold four dominions now because of being a recluse. My dominion limit is, is... Drop to three, I guess. I don't see where it says that, but... It doesn't say I would lose it. Is it because my diplomacy score drops? Uh, I have not looked really at Hearts of Iron lately. I don't understand why I would lose that. If my wife switches her focus to stewardship, will will that change? No? Doesn't look like it? 12. Alright, so I think we'll try and finish the siege here. Every woman for herself? The forceful knock on the door clears every bit of drowsiness from my mind. Who disturbs a prince at this hour? My late-night visitor is none other than Mayor and I have to speak with you privately, away from listening ears. I have discovered something very interesting. Princess Philippa, she is willing to share it with me if I let her off the hook. I swear after this you will owe me no longer. I'll lose the favor hook on the mayor. I gain ten opinion, and she will tell me a secret. Sure. Tell me what you learned about my wife. Did I switch it to politics? Baron Bragret seems to have be having difficulty. At her, he's buried his face in his food. He's only talking to for asking and serving. No, no way am I giving you the trait shy. He's got a trait of gluttonous, which is a little bit concerning for someone that is, you know, gluttonous seems like it gets them killed real quickly. He's not my heir either. We'll go with impatient over gluttonous. I'd rather have that. So you're saying I switched her to the wrong thing? Court politics gives you plus four diplomacy. Manage the dominion gives you plus three. Maybe that'll be better. Yeah, good call, guys. So we lost the over dominion limit by having our wife switch to focusing on dominion. I was thinking that politics would be related to maintaining the hold over vassals, but I guess it's more of just running the state, the bureaucracy. 
All right, so we took that territory. We'll now march the army south to lift the siege over here. Still trying to swing Georgia? Yeah, bagel. Hey, George, so this has been my most successful round of Georgia, but I've actually founded the barony. So we didn't, we've didn't. we never done that before, so that's good for us. Meanwhile, we took a prisoner. I can't ransom them. I'm not sure why. I, I guess it's that type of character. You can't ransom... I don't know why. You would think I'd be able to. Maybe after the war? Nope, now I can ransom one of them at least. I'd rather getting I'd rather get more gold for her though. 17 isn't enough, so we'll leave her in prison for now. All right, so we're fighting these guys in another battle. An enemy army of 700 soldiers showed up. Wait, wait, wait. Don't don't move there. These guys aren't who we're at war with, are they? They're just a random army that's passing through, I guess. By the way, did we destroy what was left of their army? They only have one survivor. So we destroyed what... We basically wiped out the remainder of their army. 68 fame, 34 devotion, 28 war score. So it's a third victory. The Battle of Clargeti, the Battle of Guria, and the Battle of Second Battle of Guria. The enemy army has essentially been destroyed on the field. My wife is pregnant yet again. We could have our fifth child or sixth child now. With non-partition succession laws locked behind tech, cultural fascination system, stuff seems an early game that keeping kingdoms together is pretty challenging, basically requiring a bunch of power consolidation after kingdom splitting on character death. Pixel, that's definitely true. Uh, so far, we have had multiple successions without breaking the... So the first king, or the first count, Bagrat, built the duchy here, taking these three territories, but he only had one son. The son he had had one child before he died at the hand of his own son due to a botched surgery, and that is our current ruler of, of uh, Georgia, and we took Guria with him. Now, the good news with him is when he took over, he was 16 years old. He's still only 38, so, you know, the, the hope is that maybe we progress into new tech and we learn new, uh, we learn new, new skills that may allow us to, to have a better succession law before uh, the future. Yeah, I'd kill every kid but one. I mean, I'm trying not to game the system. But yeah, that is theoretically an option. The Ottomans did that. I, I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible. All right, so we'll ransom. They will not accept. They're greed, and it's an unimportant character. Okay, well. Got no problem with my dungeons filling up. We're almost to war score 100. We'll win this war. Okay, so, enforce demands, High Chieftain pays me 25 gold, spends 150 prestige. I get seven, I'll gain 150 prestige and 75. I don't have any allies here, so I don't know if that means I get it or not. <laughs> He'd accept a white piece. All right, so this war lasted for two years. We defeated him. We gained 25 gold. 
But does this mean we get 75 plus 150 because we had no allies? They have so much territory around here. Oh shit, by defeating them? Did I just knock out a, a... I just made these people stronger by defeating these guys? What the fuck? God, this empire of the Caucasus, this Khanate of the Caucasus is just terrifying. It can't be stopped. Again, my best chance of safety is swearing fealty to the Byzantine Empire with our 10,000 soldiers, but... They're fighting Turk... Who are they fighting? Oh, one independent province down here. They're still allied to... I stand. Do we still have alli alliances? We still have these two. So 1,300... So 2,300 soldiers from our allies plus the roughly... 1,900 soldiers we would have on our own end would give us about 4,200 versus their 3,800. Although they also are allied to these folks who have another 100, 800. They're also fighting against these folks over here and over here. Can I marry someone off to the Byzantines? I don't think so. I've had a bunch of marriage alliances. But some of those rulers have since died. All right, so working on development. Who's this guy? Holy espionage intrigue, my God. Pause. So my current counselor, she's not even a vassal, is she? She is married to one of my very good knights. All right, we are getting close to city planning. We're, well, still six years away. Meanwhile, early medieval, we're about five years away from moving to the next era, which would allow us to focus on better inheritance laws, which would help us out there. Jake9, thanks for the follow. About nine minutes. An undead blank. I can't remember if I thanked you as well. Um... What's the hook on my wife? It's a strong hook, huh? My wife is a deviant. I wonder how I know that. Blackmail my wife? I love my wife, but I'll blackmail her. Her opinion goes down. So what can I do with a, uh, I can request a divorce. They won't accept. I can't use a hook for that either. Um, what can I do with this hook? Anything? What's the point of having a hook on my wife if it doesn't give me anything?
can I disinherit sons to ensure you're the only one of the sons gets all my titles? I think so, in theory. So he's my son and heir. Oh, they should really get married, shouldn't they? Isn't it risky though? Like, my concern is that if I die young, if I if I if my my heir dies, then what happens? Well, of course my son, my son's a minor, isn't he a vassal of mine? I don't have limited crown authority or better. So I don't think I can do that. Yeah, it doesn't look like I can do that because I don't have a, um, my title isn't, um, I don't have enough crown authority. All right, so, is she not old enough yet? I don't quite understand the allow marriage part. I guess she's not old enough yet anyway. So we'll just keep going. You want to allow the marriage because he's a vassal outside of your immediate court. Okay. Gain 10 opinion of me from every courtier because of a well-organized court. All right, I'm almost on the next martial skill trait. I can ransom some folks now. Still doesn't have enough gold to ransom for... I'm confused why it lets me ransom here, but not, not elsewhere. Okay. I have another son. Oh my God. Hans. Romanos. Another child. I have another child, which means I can make another alliance with someone. Um... Espionage, bastard. While performing his duties, my spy master domain has undercovered a secret held by my kinsman, Prince Rupon. She's in fact the bastard child of her mother, Margaret and Prince Rupon. Okay. My zero year old son. Oh, they're inbred. Ha! <laughs> Lol. They will not accept? I have too many existing alliances. I only have two.
All right, my son has come of age. Oh no, he's not smart. Or he does, wait. So he does have, I'm confused there. So my son has come of age. They're now married. Start making babies, guys. Um, he's not terrible. He's not really great at anything, but he's not terrible. The Bronze Age mod for CK3. I'm not familiar with it. I saw something about it, but I'm not familiar what, you know, what the mod is is all about. I'm assuming it changes the world to being in the Bronze Age, but I don't is it is it a total conversion mod already pixel that they've come out with in like 3 days? Next to the claimant's arrow there's a book. Click on the book. Where am I going here, Prometheus? I'm going to invite this amazing spy master to court. Who is she betrothed to? I can't murder him? Or I can. But it won't succeed. Colin Glock and Monkey Boys. Thank you for the follow. I wish I had more women in my court right now. Let's make him my spy master. Spy Master is more than good, is great. So what do I want him to do? Find secrets. He's a level 20, so he should be damn good at it. I mean, yeah, I guess keep finding secrets here. Because I want to be able to blackmail these folks. Or, like, I don't know, do something with them. Are we still at level 12 development? Yeah, we're working on 13, but it's it's a slow process. Anyway. Um New lifestyle perk for Marshall. So I can go with Kingsguard, which will give me four more knights. So we'll do that, because I'm almost to Gallant. The four additional knights also will let me have more of these folks. Apparently I have two already there. I don't want this vassal who has a level zero prowess in battle. 
I probably don't want my son and heir who has a level 5 prowess in battle either. Um, so let's invite some more knights. And see what we can do. Put my son on point. Yeah, I don't have anyone to marry my Spymaster to, though. That's the issue. The only woman in my court right now is uh, is already betrothed. All right, it's telling me I can still ran ransom her. They are so poor. They're gaining gold so slowly. I'll just take the 26 gold now. My powerful vassals don't like me, but they don't, like, dislike me too much. One of these folks has arrived. A competent fighter, level 12. I'm not going to get a ton of people showing up, so the one positive is going to be cheap. Oh, shit. I've been overwhelmed by stress. I completely forgot inviting people to court stresses me out. We've moved up to level two. All right, what's gonna happen here? Mental break. Shirked duty. Damnation, I need time to myself, too. So what if I don't come to court for a few days or even a month? Ruling is my prerogative, and I will exercise it or leave it be at my leisure. I'm the prince. I am the prince. And if I do not want to face the co courtly hordes, I do not have to. Be gone, all of you. You lose 42 stress. Your courtiers are forced away and lose 15 opinion of you. That seems like a pretty big penalty. A stiff drink solves most of my problems. You gain the trait drunkard. You get a tiny health penalty. My prowess drops. How? My prowess is already not very good. But I also lose two, two stewardship, which is important to holding on to my, uh, my folks the way that they are. I'll gain 35 more stress. What about decisions? Is there a way is there a way to lower stress? Okay, so we ransomed her. Seclude yourself to focus on your mind. You will lose some stress. Truly center my mind and clear my thoughts and concerns. I have a thou I have almost 1,100 prestige. I've got some prestige to help. Goodbye! <laughs> so I lose 24 stress. Not enough to get us down to the next level. Fuck it, let's do a hunt. We haven't we haven't done a hunt. My stress level drops back down to one. And let's see what happens on the hunt. My son David and I went ahead of the group chasing a boar. I follow close behind and find him standing above a commoner, tugging an arrow out of the poor man's chest. As soon as he sees me, he hides the arrow behind his back. It was the boar father, I swear. Soon enough, the rest of the party catches up and demand an explanation. David fought valiantly to save him. I saw it. 
a hundred percent chance that all participants in the hunt lose fifteen percent opinion or fifteen opinion of me. We must cover this up. Murder secret is exposed. Ha! My son's a murderer. My son must answer for his crime. Too bad the boar got you both. Whoa, I could kill my son. So is my son any good? Level 10 Marshall, so he's average, moderately intelligent. I mean, I think my other son is actually going to be better. Why is your son your brother-in-law? I'm not sure. Oh, so <laughs> my son is married to the sister of my wife. Ha! <laughs> oh, that's messed up. All right, guys. Listen, we've got enough sons. My current son isn't isn't my favorite. We're going to do it. We're going to kill my son. Listen, he murdered someone. I know he's my heir, Dark, but can I just... I'll have a new heir, won't I? I can kill my heir. I'll have a new one. Right? I think so. I think... My, so this son is currently... He's of age, and he's a 10 marshal... He's not good at diplomacy. He's not good at money. He's not good at intrigue. He's pretty smart, and he's a mediocre marshal. His brother is not even of age yet, so he hasn't gotten, like, sometimes you get perks when you come of age, and he's already the same level marshal as him. And the other stuff, maybe not as good, but he's also, like, I don't know. Sorry, David. Listen, if you had been a little bit better, if I liked you a little bit more, then uh, then I'd save you. So my new son is my new heir. He's also a baron already. So I don't really know what that means. The hunt is drawing to an end. We mount our horse. Tell me that wouldn't stress me the fuck out. I just killed my son. I just killed my son! <laughs> anyway, the hunt is drawing to an end. We mount our horses to leave the hills behind as the servants prepare the boar and the other game for the journey back. Everything that could go wrong seemed to do so, but there were silver lining to be found. Went from zero to a hundred real fucking fast. You betcha. You're damn right it did. <laughs> huh. The silver lining is you killed your heir. The silver lining is I got a better heir. I've got so many children. At this point, you got to figure my guy's just like, whatever, dude, there's six more of you or five more of you. He 
he, he hunted the most dangerous prey, man. That's true. Okay, so another knight has shown up at court. Oh, wait a minute. So, another woman has shown up at court. I thought a soldier just showed up. An experienced fighter. I don't have the money to recruit him. So I have to wait a little bit. Or... Hey, good news, guys. My sister-in-law is single again. All right, everybody. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, the highlight of this one, we murdered our son. But is it really murder if he murdered someone first, or is it justice? You be the judge. Let me know in the comments down below. Uh, that's going to do it for episode number six of our Crusader Kings Let's Play series. Hope you guys are enjoying this series. Uh, and until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, as always, until next time, I'm out.